What are the challenges Israel faces in a ground assault on Gaza? The enclave is some 41 kilometers long and an average of nine kilometers wide. Highly urbanized, it also has wide open spaces, mainly used for agriculture, to help feed the 2.2 million people being held there. But for the most part, Israeli soldiers will have to move and fight through densely built up cities and towns. Israeli officers have been studying the lessons learned by the Russian military in trying to take Ukrainian cities and are trained to use a combined arms approach. This means infantry moving alongside tanks as they're being watched and protected overhead by Air Force jets and armed drones. Hamas has learned from its ground battles in Gaza in 2014, where small unit tactics worked well at ambushing individual groups of Israeli soldiers. Hamas's assault on Israeli kibbutzes and military outposts was well planned and thought out. So too are their defenses within Gaza itself. Urban combat is one of the most intense forms of warfare and usually favors those on the defense. Line of sight is often low, with visibility sometimes down to what you can see peering around a corner. Casualties are high, especially for the attacking force. Advance warning of an approaching enemy usually gives time for extensive defenses to be prepared. Disguised urban firing positions are reinforced and holes are dug in walls between adjoining buildings, allowing free movement of fighters up and down a contested street without exposing themselves to fire. Caches of ammunition are stockpiled at key intervals and likely approachways are mined and booby-trapped. The extensive bombing of Gaza by the Israeli Air Force may actually backfire by helping Hamas be able to defend Gaza more ably. During the Second World War, the German Air Force made the mistake of heavily bombing Stalingrad prior to the German army trying to seize the city on the ground. The bombing has killed many civilians, but also covered the streets with rubble and effectively turned every destroyed building into a fortified position that made it easier for the Soviets to defend. Armor could not move through the streets quickly and many tanks became sitting ducks. Snipers harassed attacking troops, so virtually all movements stopped. The Israelis have figured out a way around this and have made extensive use of military bulldozers, sometimes through housing in order to carve paths to their destination. The most viable way for Hamas fighters to move through the enclave is through their extensive tunnel system that they have spent years building and has only been partially detected and destroyed. Bunker buster bombs may have collapsed some of the buildings near the surface, but Israeli special forces will have no choice but to go into those tunnels and fight. Subterranean warfare has been something both the Israeli and US militaries have increasingly focused on as potential battlefields of the future. Small unmanned robots are designed to move through and map tunnels in front of any force, alerting it to the presence of any defenders. Large unwieldy assault rifles would have to be ditched in favor of more compact machine pistols. The use of explosives would have to be carefully thought out. A fine line in destroying a tunnel up ahead without collapsing the tunnel you're in. And one last thing, Hamas fighters have nowhere to retreat to, can't run away or even hide for any length of time forcing them to fight even more desperately. Their ranks likely swelled by young men whose relatives have been killed in the bombardment. Fenced in and walled off, everybody is stuck there. No one gets out.